Hey, and welcome to The Noble Marriage, where we bring relatable, raw, and real conversations all about marriage and life. Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And that's Nala. And this is Nala. This is Nala. (laughs) Hey, babe. Hey, handsome. It's good to see you today. Thank you. It's good to see you. We are on episode two today. Two. We're going to go back to 2014 in our life. 2014. Do we have to? (laughs) (laughs) So today we are taking a rewind back to 2014 in our life and in our marriage. Yeah, I don't think uh, time travel is a thing, but if it were, I would not want to do it. Me either. Have not you ever all. like looked at your past and you're like, "Ooh, glad I'm not there anymore." Yeah, now obviously <laughs> That's how we feel about 2014. <laughs> <laughs> obviously if I were, I would make I would be a better decision maker. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you? Like wouldn't you be a better decision maker for your future self if you knew <laughs> what your decision making was going to happen, like what the the um what's the word I'm looking for? The consequences to our decisions because we really do reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. You're going to get out of it what you put into life. Yeah, so true. Yeah, so I was pregnant that year. Um, uh, A lot of things happened in 2014, but one of the things that we were going to talk about today is a story that you were telling it's the first chapter right now. We don't know if it will be because <laughs> we didn't really write it as the first chapter, but it's a, it's a story that you're telling about a police chase that you were in. Hmm. You know, I was in law enforcement, retired from law enforcement. And this particular year, I just look back and think of what a poor decision maker I was in my life in many different areas. So I was doing surveillance on this vehicle and on this person. And I was told that they were carrying large quantities of drugs. And so I got behind this vehicle and a car chase happened. I chased the vehicle for a while. The car pulls over, the driver gets out and runs and I chase after him. And I realized, and it's it's dark, I realized I don't have a flashlight. I did not grab my flashlight out of the car. But I remember that I have a taser and my taser does have a very small light on it. So I pull it out and I shine it on the suspect as we're running and I use my taser to tase him and only one probe hits his jacket, like a real puffy jacket because it's cold. And the other probe must have hit the fence, like the bar bar, uh, the chain link fence. And somehow, I don't know how this happened, but it's happened multiple times. It shocked me. <laughs> and it shocked me and it made me drop my taser. And I was like, man, what in the world? That was the first time it it happened, but it's happened twice. I was like, what in the world happened? And so obviously I can't keep chasing him. I have no flashlight now. And he's already jumped the fence and and gone. And I came back to my senses. Like I I shouldn't even be doing this. Mm -hmm. I need a real flashlight. So I grabbed my taser and I put it back in the holster and I I come back to the, the vehicle But here's where I wanted to share uh, the part of the story that's more important. This this suspect was, we we chased him basically for three, four hours that night. Different houses, different locations, and never found him. But three days later, um, we served a search warrant on the house, uh, got the suspect out of it. He was interviewed. And in the interview, he stated that he had a gun and he was going to shoot me or, or try to kill mm-hmm. me if I kept running wow. after him. Like He said he, he ran for a little bit further in the woods and then stopped mm-hmm. and was waiting on me to ambush me. Mm-hmm. And that took me, like that, hearing that took me to many other thoughts where I was a poor decision maker. Like you were starting to see your decisions were declining. The exactly. quality of the decisions you're making. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was seeing those happening and it just made me think of other ones like in the recent past that, that I had done the same thing, uh, not the same thing, poor decision making. 
Do you feel like it was mainly law enforcement that you saw or was it your whole life? Hmm. No, no, it was in, in law enforcement, but it was my entire life. I was making poor decisions. Yeah. And what's really interesting about that, and you may relate to this, in those dis- in those poor decision makings, when the consequences would happen, and there's always consequences, I would not take personal responsibility for those. I, I would blame it was it was this fault or someone else's fault or I'm a victim of something mm. in this. It can't be my fault that whatever this consequence is. Mm. But I was able to see in 2014, man, what a poor decision maker Mm. I was. Wow. You also had a lot of other things going on for you at that time that I think were kind of starting to pile up in your (laughs) life. Some addictions. Pile up is what a, a great way to describe it. Yeah. It was kind of piling up. And you may experience that in your life as this, as you're becoming a more of a poor decision maker. Like if that's what's happening, like if you're stepping away from who it is God called you to be, you're stepping away from that and you're becoming a poor decision maker. It does spiral. The more that we go out, it spirals more and more and more. And that's what I was experiencing is it was hitting me in every possible area of my life, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, every single area, every relationship, in my life was being touched Mm -hmm. by this. Yeah. My finances were being touched. My, uh, my community around me was being touched. My emotions, my physical health, Mm -hmm. my well Uh, I can't think of any aspect that was not being affected. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget when you came home after being diagnosed with PTSD and, Hearing also that you were a functioning alcoholic. Because for me, I didn't know what was healthy. Like what you are mean th- you mean um seeing me drink, you didn't right. realize is that a healthy amount or is that right. an unhealthy amount of alcohol? Right. And same thing with with like the pills that you were taking and even your emotions and how you were acting. I didn't know what was normal and what was healthy. And so I overlooked a lot of things, um, but I remember you coming home from the doctor saying that he said you're a functioning alcoholic. And I was like, that makes so much sense to Mm. me. And then I could really see the addiction side of it because I enabled it for so many years thinking that was the only way you would sleep. That's the only way that you could get away from like turning work off while you're at home. You mentioned also that you preferred me that way. I actually did. You were a lot easier to deal with. But but also there was a line. And if you crossed that line, you weren't easy to deal with then either. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so there was this happy middle that I was trying to shoot for. And I mean, I had my own, before I got pregnant, I had my own issues with alcohol. You mentioned something that I think is really inter- or key. Over, you overlooked I did things you overlooked overlooked, a lot uh, red flags you overlooked um, things that you're like I I I feel like I should address this I feel like I should look at this I feel like we should open this up in our relationship and talk about this and you overlooked those things I did I imagine you experienced that too in, in your marriage is there there's probably some red flags that are there well there were <laughs> there were times i did try to address things you yes you did and i would shut you down through either my body language listen we all have ways that we react that where we want to just shut somebody down like don't talk to me anymore and we do those in unhealthy ways so mine would be a negative body language passive aggressive um just not being loving, kind, honoring uh, to you or to the covenant of our marriage. Yeah. So I did overlook a lot because I tried in the past things I tried to share. I wasn't sure that it was healthy and it got shut down. And so I learned I have to overlook these things. 
it's the way we train our spouses and we train the people in our lives. We train them to do not, do not make me feel blank. Especially controlled. Do not make me feel whatever it is I feel because I don't like it. So, rah. And you learn hey, that's not something we talk about. Yeah. We, don't, we, don't, we don't discuss that in the family. Right. That's something we sweep under the rug because it's too hard to address. Right. Mm. Isn't it? And I'm sure that you experience that too, that, that thing, that one thing that we just can't talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it brings out the ugly in both of us. Yeah. It, and by the way, me saying this, it doesn't mean it's healthy. It's very unhealthy. It, right. Things need to be talked about. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we picked out a little section of the book that I wanted you to read. Okay. Even in the destructive decision-making, there was starting to be an awakening within me. I was slowly realizing that I was untethering and fraying at the edges. I was coming apart slowly. I felt my insides turning more dark. The light that was once inside of me felt like it was being extinguished. And I was just now starting to become aware. Yet still feeling helpless of what to do to stop this train wreck of my life from crashing and burning. Mm -hmm. Now I can look back and see that all of my behavior and the consequences of my behavior was a culmination of 38 years of my sinful nature, putting up fig leaves, fig leaves, and creating a facade for others and never really knowing who I truly am. Yeah, let's just pause there for a second because fig leaves, we have a sign right here, leave your fig leaves at the door because what we have discovered is fig leaves is what keeps us from intimacy and closeness. And that's what this channel is all about. We've got all the fig leaves are gone. Fig this leaves is who comes, we are. <laughs> fig leaves comes from fear. It does. We have fear. We put fig leaves on. Yeah. Do you want to talk about fig leaves or you may keep going? No, keep going. Okay. Okay. I was beginning to realize there is something not working correctly with me. Something possibly wrong with me. I hoped that Adele and my family would never find out about me. Mm. I hope you and the rest of my family never realize what a screw up that I am. Mm. What if they realize the fears that I have and the consistent negative internal faults that I'm having about myself? What if they're able to see how not good enough or what a failure I really am? Mm. Can I just refresh my facade to make myself, myself appear better? Yeah, if, we, if only we could refresh that facade. I mean, there's a lot of ways that we can try. I could go to a course, a class. I could buy a new car, a new house. I could, I could change my relationship now and get a new relationship. Yeah. I can change my appearance, how I look. Yeah, I could, uh, I could try harder to hide my emotions. Mm -hmm. I could put a better, like I could take some classes to uh, have a better face whenever it's something's going on inside. Mm -hmm. All those things are possibilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All those things are facades. Every single thing up there is a fig leaf. You know, it started in Genesis 3. Mm-hmm. Genesis 3 in the Bible. Adam and Eve were perfect without sin. They were naked and they knew each other. And it wasn't awkward. It wasn't a thing to be awkward about. It was they were together and knowing each other and they knew God. They had such right. a great relationship with God. It was like this triangle, like a perfect triangle of relationship. 
And then sin entered the picture. You know, we have an evil one. Ephesians 6, 12 will tell us this, not against flesh and blood, it, but we have an evil one. There's an enemy against us, and that's what happened. And Eve and Adam fell to sin. And when they did, God didn't separate from them. Right. They ran. They had fear immediately mm-hmm. and ran and put fig leaves on. They said, oh, no, I'm, I'm naked and afraid, and I'm putting fig leaves on. Yeah, we've been doing that ever since. Not only that, and this is interesting, too, when God came looking for them and he always comes looking for you, mm-hmm. nothing can separate you from the love of God. There's no height and no depth. Nothing can separate you. When he comes looking for Adam and Eve, he's like, where are you? It's not that he didn't know where they were. He wants to know, like, do we know where we are like right now in our mindset and our emotions and what's really going on? And he's asking them, where are they? And what happened? And the first thing they're doing is blaming and being the victim. Adam is like, the woman that you gave me. Mm -hmm. Blaming God and blaming the woman. (laughs) He's being a victim. And he goes to Eve and he's like, the serpent made me do this. And we've been doing that ever since. We've put in fig leaves up these facades that make me, maybe you'll like me. Maybe you'll like me better if I do this thing. And we do been doing it ever since. Here's the crazy thing, though, is fig leaves decay. They yes. die. Because they they're alive. They have a stench. Mm. Yes, they do. And, you know, Here, here's our the, whole Here's the life. stench. Here's the stench of one. You, Because this will relate. The people pleasers out there. I'm a recovering people pleaser myself. Here's uh-huh. the stench of it. When someone asks me to do something and I, I want to please them and I do it, I have resentment. Yeah, because in your heart, you don't want to. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's the stench right but there. But you say yes anyways. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. When I'm around, now that I have taken all those things off and I've shed a lot of the past, um, when I get around other people who have fig leaves on, it's so interesting to watch them shift these leaves around to make sure that people don't see the real me. The real person on the inside. It's really interesting. You and I did that. We were constantly trying to adapt and adjust and keep people from really getting close to us. Yeah, what we have determined, what we have, not us ourselves, what we have actually seen is the fig leaves that we choose to put on in our lives, the facades we choose to put up in our lives actually dictates your entire life. It dictates the clothes you wear. The people you're around, the person you marry, the car you drive, the job you work at, Mm -hmm. everything about you is dictated by fig leaves, by the lies that was written on our hearts. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get so much deeper into that much later in this series. Yeah, I think. So you're going to want to. Yeah, you're going to definitely want to stick around for more of that because, oh, it's good. So as we've been talking about this. Have you seen yourself in our story, like the facade that you possibly put up in your life? The facade that you put up around your spouse, around your family, that I need to be perfect. I need to be a particular way around them. So when we're looking at facades, you know, when you were in policing, How did that look in your career to try to hold it all together? Because you had a lot going on under the surface and you were trying to make it appear like you had it all together. I mean, you used some pretty strong words here. You said you were untethering and fraying at the edges, coming apart slowly. Mm. I felt my insides turning more dark. Talk about that. Man, I don't even know if I want to talk about that. Mm. Such a tough time in my life. And it really did feel like that. It felt like if you were to imagine, I don't know, a rug that had a a little tether in it that, that was coming apart. Yeah. And it just, it all starts untethering and everything starts coming apart. And the whole rug itself is now all coming apart 
Mm-hmm. And that's the way it felt like my soul, like my spirit and soul was happening was everything was untethering. Everything was getting darker. I felt like I couldn't drink enough of my worries away. I couldn't take enough pills of my worries away. Mm-hmm. My anxiety level and insomnia and ability to sleep. Um, I could not imagine um, what happiness and joy would even like anymore. Yeah. It was completely um, I'm not able to get access to that in my mindset, not able to get access to to what that life, I mean, what joy would even be like. I remember that in you mm. because I was pregnant and I was experiencing the joy of my life. Because we had tried for a long time to get pregnant, and I had a miracle baby in my belly. Mm. I was having a completely different experience of life, and I Mm. could see that in you, and I could not for the life of me understand how you could be so sad when we are experiencing something so joyful in our lives. Yes. Listen, mental health is one of those things that, I don't, I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to, to how mental health happens. It happens in a lot of different ways, you know, from chemical imbalances to substances to traumas and interactions we have in our life. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily know the exact formula for all the different things, but there's no joke about it. It's, it's cons- all, my particular one was PTSD. And it's all consuming and it makes it completely about me. I can't see outside of me. Right. And it's difficult to be in a place where I am all I think about. And you may experience that too, as you're listening to this, like a lot of my thoughts do center around me. Well, I imagine you're miserable. It's misery whenever I'm internally thinking. And so that's that's what I was experiencing during that time is is this misery, this um I can't think of another word other than that. Darkness. Yeah. Yeah, PTSD is a way for the enemy to keep you trapped in a repeated pattern of thoughts. Yeah. That are evil. They're meant to destroy mm. your life. They're meant yeah. to keep you inwardly focused and a victim and keep you stuck stuck there. Yeah, and as I was, as you was talking, thank you. You brought me back to what I'm, what I'm actually doing here is I'm establishing the facades I had going on at the time, and this internal junk I had going on it had me, I don't know, working overtime as my construction worker on the outside, trying to make sure everything's good. So what I was doing was putting earbuds in my ear to to drown out an internal dialogue because man, my emotions were just all over the place. My, my mental health, I just repeated thought patterns, repeated patterns that just unhealthy. My physical health had started going downhill because one of the reasons is I was keeping so many secrets from you Mm -hmm. and internally, man, it, it does secrets wreak havoc on health it causes so much dis-ease in my body and um spiritually i was so i was so disconnected from god not that i didn't know god not that i didn't go to church i mean in my mind like what god would want to be around me Mm. all the junk i've done Mm. i I just didn't see that i didn't have a, a right relation a right thought process about who god was to me and so, yeah, well, I imagine you felt unworthy of his love. I did. I did feel unworthy. You know, those are the specific facades I was putting up is trying to not look unworthy, trying to be enough, trying to not be a failure and trying to not make people not let people judge me. Those are the things I'm trying to cover up with my facades. Yeah. Oh, that's good right there. Because those things are. um debilitating they they are when i think as who i am like when i believe those lies mm, it is all consuming yeah and i imagine you're looking at yourself right now thinking what are my lies 
what are the things I believe about myself that are debilitating me in my life that are making me feel like I'm untethering and fraying at the edges or coming apart slowly on the inside, you know, hiding and keeping secrets and not being able to be fully known is the most exhausting job. Lots of work. So much work to not let you know who I really am. Right. Because if you knew who I really am, you wouldn't love me. That's at the core. That's what's really going on. That I keep my fig leaves on because you won't accept me. You won't love me. You won't care about me. Mm. You'll disregard me. Yeah. And I'm just thinking back to the fig leaves. I heard a story about an employer who hired an employee. And uh, six months after they were hired, uh, he said to the employee, hey, what happened to the person I interviewed? Right. <laughs> Can I have them back? We have had so many of those experiences in our life, too. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the facade that we're talking yeah. about. Is I need to put my best person forward. Yeah. And I think it's just natural for us to do that because we live in a world that, man, it's hard to keep up, you know? Especially with the Joneses down the road. They got all this stuff and we got to keep up with them. So it all kind of goes together. It's all to fill a void. It's all to fill this void that I feel inside of me that I desperately want to fill and feel satisfied. And these facades, whether they're emotional facades or actual facades to make me look better. Yeah. They're all just decaying and crumbling and untethering (laughs) constantly. It's so hard to keep up. Exactly. Here's a sneak peek. I'm glad you said that. Here's a sneak peek at the very end of like what we hope you get out of it. Is this all about a vertical relationship with God? Every yeah. single bit of it is about a vertical relationship with God. Because, you know, let's go back to Genesis 3. Adam and Eve sinned, right? And God came looking for them. God didn't leave them. That's right. He came looking for them. He wants a personal relationship with them and us. So the only thing that was missing in that relationship was they chose to go hide and put fig leaves on. Yeah. And so if we get our vertical relationship right with God, like we see him exactly the way he really is, like in truth, Mm -hmm. not the way we think, you know, God is judgmental, not loving or whatever your theory is. If we can get that vertical relationship with God, he's the one that pours into us. Then we're whole and complete individuals. That's right. Whole and complete individuals. And then I don't expect other things to completely complete me and make me fill the voids like pornography or masturbation or other people or material things, a, ca- a new car or a nice house or a, s- a ski, uh, whatever the thing is, gambling, whatever the thing is that we're choosing to make an idol over God, like alcohol was one that we mentioned a couple of times here, whatever that thing is, all I'm doing is just filling that void with it. But, but it can only be filled only. with a vertical relationship from God. That's right. So there's a sneak peek. Yeah. I mean, I had my own facades going on as well. I was trying to make myself good enough. Um, And that created this huge perfectionism in my life that I needed everyone to see just how good I am. Perfect, actually. And I never made it to perfect. Hmm. I tried really hard. I'm sure people are relating to this. So exhausting. Exhausting life. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're going to go so much more into this, but what I want to leave you with today is where in your life do you feel you need to present a different version of you? Where are you putting up facades, fig leaves, to cover up the things that you don't want people to know about you? Yeah, when you're talking about the work that's involved in the, the facade, Jesus says, come to me. You who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, his yoke is easy. His yoke is light. He 
is the only one that's going to give you the peace, the joy, all the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That's, that's who God is. That's, he is. He is the exponential quantity of all of those things to the highest degree that you could ever think of, and those are the gifts that he gives to us. Mm-hmm. And that's where we will get that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. And we hope to see you in next week's episode. Bye. Bye. Boom. Yeah. Thanks, babe. That was great. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you too. That was an excellent episode, I feel like. I think so too. I definitely, we needed that reroute. Because yes. you were talking and I was like, ah, oh, we're missing something, something. And then it was like, Holy Spirit was like, boink, there it is. Connect the dots. You haven't connected it yet. So. It's like, duh. Well, I was thinking, how does the police fit in with the facades? That's what I was left with Thanks for as that. you were talking. So, yeah, it worked out great. So grateful for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit.